Cochran. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Empower College and Career Center. That's really just a fancy title for principal because we serve both high schools. We don't run like a normal high school. We don't have normal titles. I'm going to hand the mic off so that everyone sitting here, you know who you want to be looking at while I'm talking. How about that? Good evening. My name is Julie McCutcheon, and I'm a I'm school counselor at Jackson County High School. I'm also the dual enrollment coordinator. And I'm John Eastler. I'm the CEO of Empower College and Career Center. And I am Robin Lance, the dual enrollment coordinator for Lanier Technical College. I serve as Barrow County Banks and Jackson County and Gainesville City Schools. Hey, I'm Bacchus. I'm in East Jackson, um, handling the dual enrollment and college career planning. And I'm handing it off. Hey guys, my name is Imani Cavill, and I'm the Assistant Director for Dual Enrollment Program Services at the University of North Georgia. Thank you. Uh, this night would not be possible, in, it wouldn't be possible without the work that these fine people have put in. I'm going to give a very brief overview of your moment, and I will tell you, you see, my daughter is 18 and my son is 20. So a few years back, I was sitting in your seat wondering about dual enrollment, and it's not as scary as it makes out to be. It's a lot of work on the student to get everything done, and, and I'm going to stress that again. It is work on the student. Um, mom and dad, you may feel that you need to continue to follow up and follow up, but part of being ready for dual enrollment is being responsible enough to take those steps to do what you need to do to become a dual enrollment student. And I think that everyone up here will kind of reiterate that as we go through. Um, this bit.ly, I believe it is, you can type in the bit.ly or you can scan this QR code. And this leads to more information about the Jackson County Schools Dual Enrollment Program. It is the handbook. So what I am going through, you don't need to write down. It is all in that handbook. There are some things that these uh, fine presenters might want you to write down, but I wanted you to know that you do have access to this handbook. Um, I had these young ladies test it today. I know it works. So I am grateful that I have them and that technology was my friend today. Anybody need it? We're good. All right, so what is dual enrollment? Dual enrollment, enrollment is just an opportunity for high school students to take college courses and earn credit at both the college and at the high school. There are a prescribed list of courses available at Georgia Futures. There are a certain number of courses and a certain, um, you're limited. You can't just take basket weaving. You can't just, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get out of the light. You can't just take um, any course that you want. There are certain courses that you can dual enroll um, in, and those are listed at Georgia Futures. And again, your high school counselors and your college counselors will tell you what classes are el eligible for dual enrollment. Some of the most popular courses are like English 1101, English 1102, Math 1111, Econ, US History, Psychology. Another really popular one, I'm hitting pretty much yeah. Um, all very popular courses to take as dual enrollment students. Um, in Jackson County, we partner with Lanier Tech and University of North Georgia, UNG. We are grateful for this partnership. Both schools will have classes on our campus next year. They do this year. Um, we are able to work it in so that it works in the high school student's schedule. If you have a problem with transportation and you can't get to the college, we are a great option for that because you can come here and take the courses and we'll provide transportation for you just like we would otherwise. Okay, so what are the benefits of dual enrollment? Well, I'm just going to say it saves you a little bit of money, uh, which is a very nice thing because you're getting ahead in your college credits. If you know you're a college bound student and you can go ahead and start taking classes now, it does not count against your HOPE eligibility or your Zell Miller eligibility. Um, the classes are paid for mostly. They're going to share with you a little bit of information about the fees and potential book costs that you would have. They're going to give you a little more information on that. So if there is a major benefit to you're not paying for these courses, they are paid for. Um, you can get an early start. You can get ahead in what you want to take, which gives you more opportunity to take courses that you want to take. I am very fortunate. Um, my son was able to take, 
I, he dual enrolled me in five different classes, and now he can dual enroll. I mean, he can double major. Um, he's working on a double major at Georgia Tech right now, which is incredible because he was able to get those courses in while he was still in high school. Um, it, it, is, it is a good test of your ability to meet the rigor of a college course. So it is, um, it is time for you to see, yes, I am capable of this. I am able to do this. We're going to talk a little bit more about who a good dual enrollment candidate is in just a minute, but that is, it, it is a good thing to let you know, this is what I, I like this. This is for me. This is definitely something I want to do. Um, and like I said, it reduces your post-secondary course needs. So you take a lot of those prerequisite courses that you're going to have to take when you go to college anyway. Gives you more time to explore the things that you really want to take in college. So who is eligible to dual enroll? And I bolted out the second bullet here. A student must be approved by their home school. That is going to be either Ms. Backus or Ms. McCutcheon. So you really do need to start with your, with your high school counselors and talk to them about the process. And they're going to give you a little more information. Um, you have to be, obviously, you're enrolled in school, so we're good there. And you, there, there are several steps that you need to go through, which, again, I'm going to allow uh, Ms. Backus and Ms. McCutcheon to talk to you about in just a moment. All right, grade level eligibility. <clears throat> tenth graders are eligible, but there are a lot of requirements to be a tenth grade uh, dual enrollment student. You have to have a 1200 minimum SAT or an ACT composite of 26, which is an incredibly impressive feat for a current ninth grader. That would be, those are pretty high scores. You would have had to have, had to have already sat for SAT or ACT. Um, 11th and 12th graders, again, we're going to talk some about eligibility, and this is where the colleges are going to be specific about what it takes to get into Lanier Tech, what it takes to get into UMG. Every school has different requirements for entry, so if you are interested in UGA or Georgia Tech dual enrollment, very different entrance requirements. You can check their dual enrollment requirements on their page or speak to one of your high school counselors. So is dual enrollment right for me? Are you motivated? I mean, that is the number one thing. Are you a self-motivated child? I don't think about your child. Student, are you a self-motivated student? Um, do your parents have to continually remind you to do work? Does someone have to remind you to study? If, if you're saying, yes, my parents constantly have to stay on me, it's probably not, you're probably not ready for a dual enrollment class yet. And that's okay if you're not ready. It's important to know that going in. Um, are you academically eligible? So they're going to share with you the academic requirements to get into both of their programs. Again, UGA, uh, Georgia Tech have very different entry requirements than each other and then these schools. So they're gonna share uh, the individual entry requirements. Um, do you turn in your assignments on time? So if you're tur not turning in work, I'm going to be real with you for a minute. High school teachers are much nicer than you make them out to be. They take late work. No offense. College professors don't. They just it's, here's your deadline and that's it. And oftentimes your syllabus is given to you at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the semester and the deadlines are on it and you're not necessarily going to get a remind and you know an email and then a, a prompt in class. It's on that syllabus. So you really have to be a, a, pay attention to detail and be very specific about knowing, okay, I am good with my calendar and I'm good with time management and I will be able to handle this very well. Um, do you like to be challenged? I mean, that's a great thing to be challenged. And, and I think that is part of the dual enrollment experience as well. Um, you get a little bit of freedom. You know, you get to get a coffee every now and again. You get to act more like a college student. But... Do you like to be challenged? Do you like the idea of um, having a new adventure? You know, dual enrollment is an adventure. And your first step, I'm going to remind you one more time, is that you have to be approved by your high school council. And with that, I'm going to pass over to Ms. McCutchey, Jackson County High School counselor. Hello again, Jackson County High School parents and students. Um, we're going to speak after the general 
uh, opening. We're going to speak um, individually as a school. Our processes are similar, but just a tad different. Um, so I'll speak to Jackson County High School's process, and then in the end, we will hear from the colleges that will give you the specific information um, for their programs. So at Jackson County High School, when, um, and I've already met with lots of students to go ahead and begin this conversation, and we kind of begin with a short advisement session, uh, talk through maybe why they would want to do dual enrollment, um, possibly where they would like to do it, and then we start breaking it down by college because the requirements can be a little different. Um, particularly, we work, again, very close with UNG and Lanier Technical College, and their requirements are a little different as well. So if I have students that know for sure which one they want to do one all with, we go ahead and start talking about their GPA. Um, for an example, with UNG, you have to have a 3.25 um, core GPA, which is your academic classes, so if I have a student that's talking with me about wanting to um, dual enroll with UNG and they have a 2.4 uh, core GPA, then I can go ahead and steer or guide them towards another college selection. So that's kind of how we get it started. Um, unfortunately, I do think though a lot of our students know this, they don't have access um, to their GPA information. We are working on that. Um, but in the meanwhile, it's perfectly fine for parents or students to email me um, to get that GPA information because obviously that's kind of our starting point and you need that information. Um, so in the end, when this is over with, I'm going to be uh, set up at a table over here with a couple of different documents. And at the end of one of the documents will be my email address. So feel free to reach out to me um, to get that GPA information, which then can guide you a little better maybe which college is a better fit for you. Um, we also talk about um, thinking ahead, and this will make a little bit more sense when you hear their presentation, but um, as a student, would you like to be um, part-time dual enrollment or full-time dual enrollment? Uh, part-time would mean that you would take uh, less than four classes per semester, um, and you may couple that with um, high school classes. So my typical dual enrollment student right now takes two college classes in the fall semester, to college classes in the spring semester, and then we add in some high school classes, like uh, possibly if they're wanting to continue with band or if they're an athlete and um, they want to continue with weight training or something like that. So we kind of build their schedule based on their college courses and how many classes they want to take. If they want to be, if students want to be a full-time dual enrollment student, then they would need to take four college classes in the fall for college classes in the spring. So that's another thing for you to think about once you've heard the presentation from the colleges. Just, these are just some thoughts for you to, as you leave tonight, to think about. Um, you know, for uh, some colleges, the testing requirements are a little different to get in as to whether you need to take the ACT, SAT, or Placer. And you'll hear from the young ladies here just a little bit um, what test scores you would need. So if you do need to take the ACT or SAT, one of the um, information sheets that I have tonight um, will be an ACT, SAT um, calendar that will tell you what dates those tests are offered on and the websites to go to to register. So that's one of the items that I'll have. One of the other items that I brought with me is a dual enrollment checklist. Um, what I like to do with my students is it's, it can kind of be a little bit of an overwhelming checklist. And, you know, just as a person myself, I have to chunk things. You just can't, like, give me this whole big assignment and then turn it through. So I need pieces. So that's how I break it down for my students as well. I just don't want to overwhelm them. I don't want them to feel like I'm going to give them a checklist and just, you know, throw them to the wolves. I want to advise them. I want to work with them. And this may take a couple of times of me meeting with the student to do advisement sessions to kind of carefully plan um, what their course is and their path wants to be over the next year or two years or three years. So the checklist is, is great to give you like, okay, what is the next step? Um, and, it, and again, it'll give you a lot of forethought after you leave tonight as to what our next steps would be. Um, I look at this as being a time to learn tonight and to figure out if dual enrollment is a good fit for your student or for the student to decide that. And then you take a little bit of time um, to make that decision whether you want to be part-time, full-time, and if there's going to be any testing that you need to go ahead and get signed up for. 
Um, come January is when I start setting up my appointments with my students. So the student will just email me, and then I get you know right back with them. We set up a time. They come in. We start discussing coursework, where they're going to do that. I show them where to get to the application. Um, and again, we just do kind of a few steps at a time. Once they've gone and done these two or three parts, they're going to come back and meet with me and tell me, I've got this presentation, I've got those done. I feel good about it. Let's move on to the next step. So I do kind of chunk mine down a little bit, even though it gives you an overview on the checklist. But January is where I start sitting down and getting real with coursework. We um, go ahead and plan for the entire year. Like my students right now that are doing um, registration for their spring courses, we already picked those last spring. I met with them. Um, we did a program planner where we picked their classes for the fall and for the spring for college. And now they're just revisiting back with me. You know, yes, we're so good. We're going to stick with our plan. Um, and they have their advisement sheet, but then they go to their um, college advisor and schedule those classes. So that's kind of the overview in a nutshell of how I do it at Jackson County High School. Um, like I said, I, I want it to be a streamlined process, but I also want it to be very individual and helping them pick the best course of action and, and also helping them plan their coursework. And I, and I let them drive it because they may have courses that they're very interested in that they really want to take at the college level. Um, and so I bring them in and hear what they have to say and then we kind of, you know, sometimes reel it in and drive it in and bring it back together. But um, the big thing is finding out the GPA, deciding which college that you want to dual enroll with. If there are tests that need to be taken, some of those you need to go ahead and sign up for. Our deadline to complete um, the application process is usually in the late spring, so we have plenty of time. But then I do want to go ahead and you know start with my student appointments where they come in and meet with me a couple times in January, February, so that we can go ahead and have everything solidified and done well before our deadlines. Okay? That's kind of what it looked like at Jackson County High School. I'm very excited for you to hear um, the information that's going to be delivered tonight about this fantastic program that certainly um, can add to a student's high school experience by going ahead and tiptoeing into the college world, learning a little bit about it while you're still at home, and you know, mom and dad are still cooking and doing laundry and all those good things. So it is a good way to test the waters and to see if they're ready to be a college student. So um, I will turn it over to Ms. Backus, that is my co-coordinator of East Jackson, and she'll tell you a little bit about her program. And then, like I said, for my Jackson County High School parents and students, I'll be at this table afterwards so we can get some paperwork for you for those that would like to grab it. Hey, um, some of you guys have already seen the info session that I ran, uh, the virtual, just to give you some background. Um, our processes are very similar. I know you didn't go to your meeting talk today, but um, I have reached out to kind of let you guys know where you're at with home GPA, and I'll revisit that. We'll have a few more times that we'll kind of get going with this. And so my timeline is very similar. Um, we'll work together, uh, usually in small groups. I don't like to pull people from classes, but TAA is great. Um, and so if you hear it from me, please stay connected with Remind. Um, and check your emails. Anytime you have questions, go ahead and email me. I have some paperwork that at the end you can come and check out. Um, I want to go ahead and get on with this so that you can start formulating some of that. And then, like I said, I look forward to talking with you. Mr. Eastler. Thank you, Ms. Backus. Uh, good evening, folks. How's everybody doing this evening? Are you alive out there? I know it's an evening time. I know you've had a long day, but I uh, just wanted to talk to you about a couple things really quick. But before I get started, I do want to introduce three VIPs that are with us tonight. One of them, uh, we wouldn't be sitting here um, in this facility doing what we do if we didn't have the support of the Board of Education. So Mr. Don Clarice is sitting down here, and I would like to recognize him uh, just for the support that the entire Board of Education gives the Empower College and Career Center and what we're here doing. Uh, we also have somebody, this is a first for me, to ever have the president of a technical college visit one of these, so it's a little bit stressful. No, I'm just joking. Mr. Tim McDonald is sitting here in back. He came out tonight to see what we were doing. 
uh, with Lanier Technical College, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit more. And then we've got Mr. Uh, Dr. Chip Reynolds uh, sitting over here. Uh, Dr. Reynolds represents Lanier Tech on the board of directors for the Empower College and Career Center. Um, so we are working very closely together. Um, a couple of quick things. Number one, students, I need y'all to listen to me pretty closely. All right, if you got your cell phone now, put it down for just a minute. Because you need to hear this. You're in the driver's seat of your education. Not your parents, not your teachers, not your counselors, not your administrators. Your success or your lack of success thereafter is dependent on what you do, okay? So when you choose to do a program like Empower, or you choose to do a program like dual enrollment, you gotta realize that it has lasting impacts that could affect what you do in the future. You do dual enrollment, you get a real college transcript that will follow you wherever you go. So when you apply for jobs and they require college transcripts from all your colleges, you have to provide that. So if you choose to do dual enrollment, you need to make sure that you approach it with the utmost seriousness because it is a college level class and it can have lasting impact. The other thing is, is you get out of your education what you put into it. The strength of what you learn and what you do and what you walk away with is dependent on how dedicated you are into making that happen. I'm going to tell you something that you may not want to hear. Not everybody in this room or not everybody in this school system, in this community, in this state is going to be a winner. There are winners and losers all over the place. I'm just being real with you. What you have to do is you have to set yourself apart from your peers so that you can be ahead of them when it comes time to do the things that you want to do. So whether you choose to do dual enrollment through Lanier Technical College through the University of North Georgia, through any other college, whether you choose to come to Empower and participate in our programs, whatever it is that you choose to do, you need to set yourself apart from your peers so you're not just a part of the pack. You need to make yourself special. You need to show that you're dedicated to making yourself better so that the people in the future, whenever you're asking them to give you a job, they'll invest in you, all right? So 15 years down the road, 20 years down the road, if you're not happy where you're at and you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're not going to be able to blame anybody else for your success or for your lack thereof because of what you did. If you chose not to work as hard as you could or apply yourself how you need to apply yourself. So the reason that we're here tonight, though, is to learn about dual enrollment and our partnership with Lanier Technical College and the University of North Georgia and the fact that you don't have to get in your car and drive out of county to go do dual enrollment. That is a great opportunity for you students. Okay? It's a great opportunity to save your parents some money. I'm just going to get real. My daughter is roughly a semester ahead in college. And let me tell you, it's costing about $9,000 a semester for out-of-pocket for our expenses. So her dual enrollment that she did with her nine hours is saving us pretty significantly. And I, I hope that uh, some of you all will take that into consideration for your parents' pocketbooks for the future. I don't know if you've heard the rule of one, two, or seven. Okay? For every advanced degree... That means beyond master's, doctorate, those kind of things. For every single one of those, and let me tell you, there is a plethora of those out there right now. There are more advanced degrees than there are jobs to fill those or for those people to go into. You need two bachelor's degrees. Okay, so that's one, that's two. Most of those bachelor's degrees wind up being in the healthcare field, particularly in the nursing areas and things of that sort. And then there are seven technical skills jobs associated for each one of those. So, you know, what we do here at Empower, we talk about post-secondary or college education. That could be a four-year college. That could be a two-year technical school. That could be the military. That could be some form of apprenticeship program. 
We want you to do some advanced learning because we know for a fact that the more learning you do, the more education you get, the higher your earning capacity is, whatever that means. Lanier Technical College is one of the big reasons that we're here as the Empower College and Career Center because of the partnership through the technical college system and funding uh, us, the Jackson County community, with the $3.1 million Georgia College and Career Academy grant. The programs that they have are very stout, they're very strong, and they're very needed. Okay? So yes, I hope that all of you aspire to four-year degrees, and there's lots of different paths to get there. But we also need a lot of technical skills. And let me tell you what, young people, I'm meeting with business and industries all over the place, and I can tell you there are a lot of technical degree students that are making way more than a lot of these advanced degrees people that are out there. We need a lot. We have got a lot of openings. I heard the other day that we're actually in Jackson County under 2% unemployment. That's essentially no unemployment in Jackson County. There are more jobs than we can fill and they're coming every day. So make sure that as you're sitting down as a family that you take ownership in those decisions that you're making. That you, that you really sit and discuss those and make those best decisions and set your goals high and do what you need to do, students, to achieve those goals. Because you can. You just have to be the one who's willing to do the work and put in the blood, the sweat, and the tears to make it happen. I think Dr. Blackburn said it. Your parents don't need to be full of filling out your dual enrollment applications. It needs to be you. They're there to support you, but you need to be taking the lead on it. The partnership with uh, the University of North Georgia is just as key and critical for what it is that we're trying to do. Having the opportunities to be able to come to both of these post-secondary institutions to do some really cool learning right in this facility is really awesome. We really appreciate the partnership that both of these institutions bring to the Jackson County community. And parents, it's not just stopping with our students. Our goal and Dr. Or Mr. McDonald's goal is that we reach out and we help to help our adults retool and uptool so that they can continue their learning process and, and improving their lives. So this isn't just really about um, the, our students going on to post-secondary education. We're going to also be working towards parents. But that we got a great opportunity here. I really appreciate the fact that each one of you took the time out of this evening to come and hear about dual enrollment. These are two great programs. These are two competitive programs. They're, you know, it's, it's whether you do AP or whether you do IB or whether you do dual enrollment or whether you come and just do the traditional high school program, that doesn't matter to any of us. What matters is that you do what gets you where you need to be. We're not gonna tell you what you need to do. You're that advocate. You know where you want to go. You and your parents need to help map that out. And your counselors are right here beside you to walk alongside you with that to make it easier for you to do. Okay? So uh, make sure that when we're done that you go up and you talk to them on an individual basis, both the, uh, Jackson County and East Jackson, as well as Lanier Tech and UNT, and know that we're here to support you through this process. If you need anything, Dr. Blackburn or I, or just a call away, we're here to support you. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over right now to Miss Robin Lance. Let me just tell you a little bit about Miss Lance. Um, she is a rock star when it comes to high school coordinators for technical colleges. Uh, this isn't uh, the first technical college I've had an opportunity to work with. Uh, she's one of the best I've come into contact with. So when you need something, she's going to be taken care of. Care of you so, Miss Robin. Thanks. Thank you all for coming out tonight. It is my great pleasure to see you here and to come learn some more about dual enrollment. Uh, my slides kind of are a little repetitive to what Dr. Blackburn already said, but I'll just kind of whisk through the first part so I don't bore you. Um, we were to cover some dual enrollment questions like what is dual enrollment, the benefits, is it the right fit, why is there tag? I think you all know by now, dual enrollment is for qualified high school students who are looking to earn college credit while attending high school. Um, 
one thing that we did discuss already is in 2020, HB 444 was passed, and that implemented some new regulations on dual enrollment. And within that, it created some great eligibility. So, like 10th graders, you can start if you have certain your ACT score, your SAT score has to be, like they said, 1200 or 20 for ACT, um, or you can start to take CTA pathways. Um, specific courses may not always be covered in dual enrollment, like art appreciation or music appreciation. Those used to be there no longer covered. Um, you can certainly self pay for those if you choose to. Um, they implemented the two course withdrawal limit. So after two withdrawals, you're done. You're no longer eligible for dual enrollment funding, and you're no longer eligible. You cannot repeat a class, but you don't pay for repeats. So if you feel like you're getting in trouble and you need help, reach out to myself or your counselors. We have a tutoring program. You can do it online. Um, you can do it here at Carroll. We'll probably have tutors here for you. So just always keep in touch with your professors and us. We're here to help you. Um, then also the 30 credit hour limit has been implemented. And once you reach that, if you're eligible, there are other means to help you pay, um, like Hope Career Grant and Hope Grant. And then you can always also opt to pay out of pocket. It's still a lot less expensive than paying regular tuition. Um, some of the benefits for dual enrollment. So dual enrollment was not around when I was in school, and I really wish it was because my parents they didn't plan for me to go to college. So I'm stuck with unfortunately a lot of college debt that I'm still paying off at my age through my cell phone. So it's just a great opportunity that I'm really passionate about and encourage students to do. If you can. Um, like I said, the dual enrollment is not for everybody. You have to, I'm getting ahead of myself. You just have to be in the right, right mindset to do it. Um, which, like I said, it's free tuition, your textbooks are covered, the mandatory fees are covered. Um, the only thing that's not covered specifically will be like um, malpractice insurance that you may have to pay for if you're taking like our medical assisting program. And it's usually less than $10. So it's nothing astronomical. So, um, Oh, for specific supplies. So a lot of our welding students have to have certain goggles, gloves, boots, those types of things. You have to pay for out of pocket. Those are not covered under your dual enrollment funding. Um, the same as with nursing, your scrubs, your uniforms, um, your stethoscopes that you have to buy. That you have to fund yourself. That doesn't cover under dual enrollment. So we like to tell students that it's not, so there's no surprise charges going into it. Um, dual enrollment obviously saves money. You can earn your college degree within three semesters. We do register, not three semesters, excuse me, two years or less. Fall, spring, and summer we register for. Dual enrollment students, some take straight through for all three semesters. Some just do two, some just do one. It's up to you what you feel that you can handle within your course load. Only you know you. You know you. You know what you're doing outside of school. If you have band practice. You don't want to overload yourself because, like they said, these classes are going to follow you on your transcript for high school and college. We have three different class types now. We have on campus, online, and we also have what we call live stream online, where you can do your classes at a set day and time if that's more convenient for you. Some students don't like circling online, and then some students have to have the on campus, in person, face to face learning. So we do offer all those different types. And then the important thing to do with funding courses, they don't count against your Hope Scholarship and Hope Grant. How awesome is that? You still have that eligibility. And then is dual enrollment the right fit? Like Dr. Blackbird said, is there some things you've got to be mature and trustworthy? Got to abide by the deadlines for your instructors. And know which course type is best for you, online or on campus, like I said, how what works best for you. And understand that you have to speak with your high school counselor first with your parents, know your support system. I'm here to help you, like I said. And then you can still participate in your extracurricular activities. And then this was really important because I hear this all the time. Well, my high school's on spring break this week. So I don't have to come to class, right? At college. No, you still have to come to class at the college. Breaks don't always coincide. So sometimes the college, the college is on spring break. You don't have to come. But then you have to go to your high school classes, right? So just kind of keep that in your mindset. Okay. 
used it to understand student expectations. Um, I don't know why that sense. Um, so you have to conduct yourself in an orderly and cooperative manner as a regular college student where you have to abide by the college rules and the policies. Attend your classes, complete your assignment at work on time. If you don't come to class, you're not going to do well. And if you're taking an online class, then you do. Oh, I can do my work in, in two weeks. At the end, I have whatever. No, you don't. You have to do it within a time frame that your instructor gives you. A lot of students think that they can wait, especially like my welding students. Most of them can wait until the end to do it all. They can't. They will catch up with you. You have to plan. Time management is important. Be self-discipline. that. Um, dedicate the proper amount of time to study for your coursework. Maintain a minimum 2.0 GPA and a 67% completion rate. If you fall below that, you're no longer eligible for diploma funding. So why on your technical college? We serve seven different counties within our service area, and we have five campus locations, and like I said, we have classes online as well. We have 28 general education courses that are articulated, and we have articulation agreement with USG. Those classes are guaranteed to transfer to any of our sister school within the USG institution. So does that mean, okay, if I take English 1101 and I'm here tech, and I want to go to Clemson or to Alabama, is that class going to transfer? It probably is, but I always encourage students to check with the receiving institution. It's always up to them as to whether they want to accept the credits. But if you, like I said, if you stay within the U.S. system, you do have those 28 for transfer. We have a 100% warranty on our education and training that you receive. So basically, if you start a job welding or an automotive or even nursing, and you don't feel like you've been trained well enough, you don't have the skills, you can come back and we will retrain you at no charge. How to have that happen? Same goes that the employer doesn't feel that you're ready, they'll send you back. But like I said, they'll send you back. And we have a 100% job placement rate. And then also, oh, we can't really see now, so we're showing our seven different counties that we cover. But they pretty much all surround all. So we have over 40 academic programs that we do offer. And we are SACS SOC accredited. <clears throat> a lot of our students, if they are not interested in a pathway program that you see listed there, they will do the um, interdisciplinary studies to get their core classes out of the way. Their English, their math, their history. I'm going to show you some of those popular ones in the next slide. I believe it's on. Um, but a lot of our students for dual enrollment, some of the more popular ones are nurse aid in healthcare. I know that we're looking to get that here at Empower. Hopefully, I have a poll we're working on it. Um, we'll see it. And as well as welding. Welding is very popular. Automotive, um, cosmetology, but you have to go to Hall Campus for that one. Okay, so th this is the slide I saw about our interdisciplinary studies. These are the classes that I see high school students taking all the time. I usually take one or two. If you've met all your high school requirements, then I see students taking four classes a full load. <coughs> all this is also on our website, guys, at weirdtech.edu. So once you're admitted and you're a linear tech student, you are eligible to participate in our student life and our activities, such as Skills USA, campus events and activities, our honor society. Um, we have lots of different resources for you, our career services, disability services, like I said, the free tutoring we have for you. You can set that up online or in person, whatever's convenient for you. Um, student Success Center, Computer Lab, Library, all that new stuff is available for you. Even though you're in high school, you're still, now you're considered a college student and you have access to this great stuff. And then that last, you know, we've kind of already covered multiple times, so we'll leave you with that one. So look at these earning potentials, guys. You can earn your degree. Diploma or certificate in two years or less and come out of school 
This is provided to us by the Georgia Department of Labor. So a little bit about our admissions requirement. Your first step, how many times have you heard it already? Talk to your high school counselor. Second step, if you're going to do that little enrollment funding application, usually with your high school counselor as well. Apply online, linear tech.edu, no application fee. And if you decide to continue on with us once you have graduated school, we waive your application fee as well. So that's two way application fees. And then your transfer will come to us, usually from your high school. And there's multiple readiness ways that you can enter in the linear tech. We don't have a minimum GPA. So if you do not have the 2.6 HOPE GPA after 10th grade that would require for you to take the core classes, you can always take our AccuPlacer. And what that is, is as an assessment, kind of a session to see where you are, to make sure that you're college ready because we want to set you up for success. Okay. If you don't want to do those options, we do the SAT, SAT, and all those numbers. We have a sheet out in the lobby that tell you what those are. Dates and deadlines. If you're interested in applying with us, we prefer to apply by these dates. Obviously, a lot of the high schools have their own dates and deadlines that you have to abide by. Those take precedent over what I say. What they say comes. Trumps me. Okay? So again, there's no minimum GPA to apply. After acceptance, this is my favorite part. After you're accepted, you're going to get an acceptance letter that looks kind of like on the left of the screen. This is Dear Future Student, and it welcomes you to when you're set. And it's going to contain your action items for your next steps which will be, which you probably already know, talk to your counselor about your courses that you're going to take. And you will have a link to register for an appointment with myself, and we can chat about your classes. I can give you some tips and pointers on things to do, and make sure you have your uh, email set up, you get into all the portals, all that good stuff. That letter is going to go directly to the email address that you provide on your linear tech application. So if your mom or dad fills out your application, and they use their email, you're not going to get your acceptance letter. They're going to get it. And I get that a lot. I didn't get it, but let me get them to check it. So kind of keep that in mind, OK? Because I get so many people who say I didn't get my acceptance. But you got it. So I know where it is. And then you'll also want to complete your new student orientation for dual enrollment students. That is, uh, we have a module set up online. You can go online and watch it now on your dual enrollment. It's self-paced. And have some really cool videos in there you can see as well. So this is our linear tech dual enrollment team. You can always reach out to me, Robin Lance. If you have any general questions, if you cannot reach me, our dual enrollment assistant is Jennifer Hernandez. Um, she's also very helpful. We can help you. And then if you have any other questions or anything like that, we'll be out in the lobby afterwards and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. And again, thank you all for coming out. And I'm going to turn it over. Ms. Amani from you and you. Part of this educational opportunity is to say, okay, you want to be 
be in criminal justice, let's get you into a crim class. Let's see if that's what you like. You like what? Yeah. Cool. No problem with it? Good. Your virtual enrollment class, you're going to experience that. This is your educational journey. You are going to get this amazing opportunity to not only be enrolled in your high school classes, but get into college classes. See if that's what you like. I have it all the time where I get a little old student who says, Miss Money, I think I want to go into nursing. So they take a human anatomy class, they go into that first class, and they say, I don't like blood, please get me out of this. So please understand a lot of the things we're going to all talk about tonight is going to be the same, but it is an amazing opportunity for you to really engage with college, know what you want to do, get in those first criminology classes, Take human anatomy, see what it is you want to do, and really start to embark on your educational journey, okay? So, to kick it off, pretty much like everyone said, we're going to talk a little bit about the admissions criteria, the benefits of dual enrollment. I'm going to briefly touch on House Bill 444, some of the courses that you can take as a dual enrollment student, and what doing dual enrollment at UNG here at Empower looks like if you want to continue at UNG after high school graduation. So first and foremost, it's a little bit hard to see, but I do have some packets outside that you can take. The admissions criteria for UNG is you do have to be a rising junior or senior. You must have taken the either SAT or the ACT. You do have to have a 480 in math, 530 in reading, with a 1050 combined score on the SAT, a 20 in English on ACT, 18 in math with a 20 composite. Those are our minimum debt and our minimum scores, so you must meet those um, admissions requirements. Part of dual enrollment is that this is a partnership opportunity. So as everyone said, your first step is going to be talking to your high school counselor because they know you better than we do. I will get to meet you. I will learn about what you like. I will learn that if you're interested in CRIM, how to get you there. If you want to go to a certain school after you finish. But they know you better than I'm going to get the opportunity to know you. So lean heavy on them. Listen to them. Part of this dual enrollment opportunity is all about fit. So everyone said fit all night. But what we really and truly mean by fit is that this is an 80-20 rule. It is 80% you guys as students for you to decide. 10% for your parents and then 10% for these guys up here. They are going to, like I said, know you better than we will. So, if you don't know this is the right fit for you, talk to these people. Talk to your support system. Ask them questions. There is no such thing as a dumb question when it comes to dual enrollment and what it can bring for you. Parents, let me talk to you guys specifically a little bit about fit. I hope. If your student is not the student, you will let them stay at home and you're not afraid that they're going to burn down your kitchen. This might not be the right fit. If you have to ask them every single day, you have homework, what's going on? This might not be the right fit for them. Students, you want to make sure this is, again, the right fit for you. As um, Ms. Blackburn said earlier, are you motivated? Are you driven? Are you okay with asking a question? Then this is going to be the right fit for you. Now, let's say, well, Ms. Imani, I don't know if this is the right fit. This is what the Home Nights are about. This is what this partnership between UNG and Lanier Tech can bring you. You can talk to us. As I tell my students, I have an open door policy. My door is literally open all the time. Even if you are not a student at UNG yet, come talk to me. All the time my door is ever closed, it can mean chicken wings, because I don't like people to see much chicken wings. Other than that, you can pretty much walk in my class, in my room, and ask me anything. So, what are the biggest benefits of doing the dual enrollment program? It is not going to infringe on your 127 hours of Zelle or Hope eligibility. So, what does that mean in women's terms? You get 30 hours of free education. It is a great, great opportunity. Tuition is covered up to 15 credit hours per semester. You get a jump start on your college opportunity. You can be fully immersed in the college while being immersed in the high school. So, how many of you guys are interested in, I don't know, college basketball, for example? Raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. One person. Thanks. 
So, if you want to go to UNG campus and you want to watch a basketball game, you can do that as a UNG student. As Ms. Williams said earlier, you are college students now. So you have this amazing opportunity to really be engaged with the things that we offer at the college, but you still have the support system of your high school at the same time. So understand that this dual enrollment opportunity is something for you to be immersed in both high school while still getting college credit. So House Bill 444, which was passed about a year ago now, um, changed the amount of credit hours that you can have paid for. Now, you do have a maximum of 30 credit hours. You um, Typically, most of our students will engage with anywhere between six and nine credit hours per semester. But even if you reach your 30 hour maximum, you can still do enroll. You can take more classes after that. You just have to pay for them out of pocket. So that is part of what we do in advisement. We're going to help you choose the correct classes, help you figure out where they're going to go in your college curriculum, and how they're going to also work best for the high school as well. So how do I become a dual enrolled student at UNG? Well, the first step, as everyone has said tonight, is going to be speaking with your high school guidance counselor. You do have to complete the application for admissions for UNG. So the actual admissions application on UNG's website, it will take you straight to Georgia Futures for you to take care of that application. You will have to submit your official test scores. You can do that from College Board or ACT. Then you're going to submit your transcripts with your high school counselors. Then verification of lawful presence. That can be something like your birth certificate or a copy of your driver's permit. But also please keep in mind that dual enrollment is for documented and undocumented students. So if you ever have questions about verification of lawful presence, please talk to your high school counselors. And then you must complete the dual enrollment funding application on GFSC. So the program is paid for, but if you don't actually complete that application, we can't pay for it. So, what are our application deadlines? So, if you were looking at starting with us in the fall, these are going to be our deadlines. It's going to be May 15th. Now, it's going to be kind of a loose deadline. So, if you're interested in spring, still talk to us about it because there might be some wiggle room for us to help you get accepted within that time if you already meet the requirements. Um, I do have copies of the deadlines on the back of the tables as well. This is going to be our admissions. Um, information, so how to get in touch with admissions, you can ask questions, my cards are in the back as well. Uh, if you want any of our dual enrollment specific information, we do have dual enrollment on all five campuses, so that's Gainesville, Cumming, Blue Ridge, Oconee, and Delonica, as well as online, fully online, and here at Empower. So there are amazing opportunities for you to take classes everywhere. So, as I said, opportunities are endless. We have over 127 dual enrollment approved courses. So there is something there for everyone. So for the student that wants to potentially do criminal justice, or the student that wants to be a nurse, there are classes that you can take. If you want to do undergraduate research, that is a very interesting one. If you want to do our Summer Language Institute, we teach that on our Delonga campus, where you get the opportunity to be fully immersed in a language. You want to learn a language like Korean, Japanese, um, French, and you want to eat, sleep, and drink that language, we will let you do that under dual enrollment and have dual enrollment cover that. If you want to join a club or organization, get involved, create your own club. I have dual enrollment students right now that just created a dual enrollment club, and they did that all on their own. So the opportunities at UNG really are endless for you to engage. The great benefit of dual enrollment is you get to finish college early, you save money, and you have this amazing opportunity to matriculate to UNG as a freshman. So if you're interested in becoming a freshman at UNG, once you are an accepted dual enrolled student, you're automatically accepted as a regular freshman student. It is no, you do not have to complete a new application. All you do is fill out one form, and you transition from accepted dual enrolled student to accepted freshman. So as we said before, um, what is the cost of dual enrollment? 15 hours per um, semester, tuition up to 30 credit hours. Mandatory fees are covered. Uh, your books are covered. 
So, now you guys don't know how much textbooks cost yet, but I promise you, a chemistry book is three hundred dollars. So, let's go. Things that you will pay, you'll pay some specific fees, lab fees, um, such as language fees. Got anybody want to guess how much a lab fee costs? Anybody? Anybody want to guess? Three hundred? Cool. Very good. Fifty dollars. So you can imagine. Hey, I can take my classes, and all I gotta come out of pocket is fifty dollars. I would be so much better for it by doing dual enrollment. So the fees are very, very minimal, and we're gonna help you figure out what classes are going to fit next. So, kind of some of those criteria and some of those courses that you can take for a dual enrolled student. Uh, if you're interested in business, you're interested in criminal justice, you're interested in nursing, there are tons of career opportunities, tons of pathways, education. I want to say I have 17 dual enrolled students this upcoming um, spring semester that will graduate with associate's degrees. So, the opportunities are endless for you to engage in classes that you like, try things, be involved, and really get the opportunity to be a dual enrolled student. So, some little basic expectations of a dual enrolled student is that you're going to ask questions. You're going to be involved. You're going to make sure you stay above that 2.5 GPA. You're going to complete your courses. If you have any high school IEPs or 504 that you need to be at the university, that's perfectly fine. We can bring those over. These are things that you're going to engage with and talk to your advisor about so that we can make sure those systems are in place for you not only to just dual enroll, but for you to dual enroll successfully. Um, as a dual enroll student at UNG, you must maintain at least a 2.5 college level GPA, and you must complete 67% of all your attempted courses. But if something's going wrong, that's the opportunity for you to communicate with us. Tell us what's going wrong. Hey, I don't know how to access my email. Hey, I'm struggling with communicating with my teacher. That is going to be where we help you. That is going to be where you lean on your parents to ask, hey, mom, dad, can you look at this assignment for me? Make sure I'm doing this right. Because as everyone has said tonight, you are in the driver's seat. So if you're not ready, get ready real quick. So last but not least, um, if you have questions, I will be here afterwards. One of the biggest things that I love as and being a part of this dual enrollment opportunity at UNG is that I really get the chance to talk to students, really help them figure out what their pathway is. So can I ask one more question for you guys? How many of you guys know which one to major in or think you want to do this career? Can you get a right hand? Okay, so parents, look around. So I'm going to tell you guys this very, very fast story about me. So as a college student, first day, orientation, walked into orientation, and I was like, what do I want to major in? My mom said, what do you want to major in? I said, I don't know. She said, hey, I think I would major, you should major in mass communications. I had absolutely no idea what mass communications was. But my mom said I should do it. So you know what I did? Went and signed up for mass communications. Does anybody know what mass communications is? No. All right, so let me explain. So mass communications, go to my first class. Mr. Bruce, he was a big gentleman. He loved to talk. He comes around. He says, Welcome to Mass Communication, Public Speaking 101. <laughs> Walked right out of class and said, you know what, I did not do this, this is not my thing. Called my mom and said, how did you tell me to sign up for Mass Communication? Do you know what that is? He said, yeah, public speaking. She said, you're a great public speaker. I said, yeah, but I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. You know what I do for the rest of my life? Public speaking. So, with that being said, listen to your parents. Nine times out of ten, they're probably right. But, you have this amazing opportunity to be dual enrolled. Try different majors, try courses, see what interests you. So, a lot of my students say they don't dual enroll because they are scared. Do not let the fear of having to publicly speak or just engaging in college level courses scare you or stop you. This is your educational journey, and how you choose to walk in it is all about you, okay? So I'm going to stop talking because we are right on schedule. So I'm going to pass this back over to Mr. Yu.
Thank you very much. Um, we are so delighted that you've all been here this evening. I'm sorry that I disappeared for a minute. We had curriculum night going on, and there had a lot of people going in and out of the business, you know, the building. Um, this is truly what I would say is just a fantastic partnership up here on the stage. I want to thank Holly Knapp, who is our college and career counselor, who is up at the top up there running the show for us. Um, we have, you know, the Jackson County East Jackson. Comprehensive High School both here and talking with you, Lanier Tech and UNG both coming and presenting information about their programs for you, knowing that anyone on the stage is very happy to speak with you as we dismiss. Um, we just really appreciate you coming, and I'm going to hand it now over to Mr. Easter. He was polite. No? no? Oh, never mind. I'm not going to. I am going to thank you yet again for coming to Empower to hear this um, wonderful presentation. Give them a round of applause. Like I said, we will all be here to answer questions. I believe Linear Tech and UNG both have tables up front, and uh, counselors will be staying up here. Okay. Thank you.